Hello everybody. Right, this is um Yeah, this is one on what to do if you run out of driver's hours. I'm on my half hour break, so I've got a bit of time, so I thought I'd just do this one. Um the driver's hours work, we're on we're on tacos. Pretty much everyone's on a card now. They go in the taco unit above the um above the trucking slots in like that. And on any given week, you're allowed the Janet and John version is you kind of drive for like you drive for nine hours a day, but twice you're allowed to drive for 10 hours. I think the kind of thinking behind this is you're gonna plan for a nine hour day, or you plan for less than a nine hour day, you probably plan for like um, a seven hour day, because a seven hour day very quickly can turn into a nine hour day, and then even that can go wrong sometimes, and that's when you use your, your 10th hour is kind of an emergency hour. But then, I mean like professional drivers like this, they'll have it all planned out. We're going from there to there and you stop and there to there and you stop and if there's an accident you take the second route and you go back you take the second route and if you have to stop earlier you have to stop earlier. When you're on the exchange, as many of you van drivers will know, it's not like that. We kind of, um, I tend to know where I'm going in the morning because I put the job the night before but I've got no idea where the second job is. Like for example, um, last week where I had um, a pickup, I'd, I'd picked it up the day before and I was up to Sheffield and then I got um, Sheffield that I got from Huddersfield down to Birmingham and then home and then it started to occur to me I've overcooked this one so I'm thinking I had the time to do it as long as it was clear then there was a jam then there was another jam and there was another jam so what do you do you've done your 10 hours you're on your nine hours or you're up to your nine hours you're running out of time I'm a bit uncomfortable here what do you do well the correct thing to do is to stop so you come out, say for example, you're on nine hours and you've got eight and a half hours, you've got half an hour left to drive in, pull into a motorway service in, pull into the parking and stop. And then you go, you have to get someone to either come and rescue the truck in their car or to come up to come and pick you up in a car and they have it, you can't drive. If you're if you're in that car with someone else, you can't drive. That they if they if they catch you doing it, you can you can get back to the yard, you can drive home in your car, you can't drive back to the yard, so you really want someone else to do it for you. Like, you know, they can't they can't just come up in a car, someone another driver jumps in your lorry and you drive the car home. That doesn't wash either. You have to come with two drivers. And then or you could just leave the truck, get someone to collect you, come back and get it the next day. Or you can spit your card out this i highly do not recommend because if you are caught driving without your card uh, even if there's an say for example there's an accident say someone who's smashed out their head drunk uh drives deliberately straight into the front of your lorry in front of 10 witnesses if you haven't got a card it's your fault if you haven't got that card in they will crucify you so that isn't the ideal one or there is the, say for example, you would need to stop, but you can't stop. And it does happen sometimes. You pull into a service station and um, you think, well, okay, I'm up coming up to me nine hours. It's 8.45, I'm going to park here. But all the, all, all the um, slots are full. It happens, depending on what time you get there, all the parking spaces might be full. So you got the next one along. All the parking spaces are full, you run out of time. You can't just park it, you can't just park on a motorway on your shoulder. You've got to keep going. In which case, you keep going until you can find a safe place to stop. Then you eject your card out, you've done over the time, do a printout and do it in your book, in your diary. Staple the printout in the book, in the diary no safe place to stop. If it so happens that you were trying to get back to base and the two service stations before base had no safe place to stop and then you got back to base and printed your receipt out and you printed your, like, your, 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 your ticket out and went no safe place to stop, that was just one of those unfortunate coincidences that happened sometimes which meant that you got back to base. Whatever you do, I don't recommend you do it often. The best way to avoid all of this is not to overcook the job. So when you're in Sheffield, the job things up in Huddersfield, do the maths correctly, add time on and go, yeah, that's, hang on, what if that, I'm, I'm thinking I can do that in like five hours, but that could take six hours, that could take seven hours. I'd better not take that one. What I'd be better off doing is um, waiting to see if something pings up, which is kind of closer to it, or I can pick up on the way home and picking that one up instead. That's what to do. 
that's what the professional sensible people to do. Don't do what I did, because as soon as I clear up here, I'm going back to the house to meet superhero Daniel Karimba, transport manager, who's going to shout at me for getting my infringement. Oh well. <laughs> we know as we go, don't we? I take pride in my car being clean. I'm not happy that I've got an infringement on my car. And in the meantime, like I say, that's kind of the world of vans and trucks and all that kind of things. And hope this aggravation does not happen to you. And I hope you are taking care and taking money.